Hello, my name is Philip Vong, and today I'll be representing a lecture that I presented for the final of the, um, the Citability class offered during the winter of 2009. I did not like my, uh, I did not do a very good job that time, so this will be an opportunity to redo it. And the lecture was on algebraic theories and application of Gribner basis to decidability. In particular, this is the decidability of universal formulas in the uh, language of rings, or in the axioms that uh, axiomize rings, that, that particular uh, algebraic structure. And this will be uh, taken from the Harrison Handbook of Practical Logic and Automated Reasoning, pages 380 to 414. An algebra, but before we go on, recall that an algebra, by definition, is a pair where we have some set A and a, li and a bunch of um, operators, that, that um, MRA operators that take uh, A arguments from, uh, or M arguments from A and spits out an element in A. And this can be for an any array M. So, and the phi is an indexing set so we can have um, countably many f uh, operators, uncountably many operators, and so forth. And that uh, is an algebra. Moreover, we can impose a set of axioms k that an algebra can satisfy. And that is what distinguishes uh, different algebras. So we see an algebra A is a model of k if A satisfies all of k's axioms. So, for example, we have axioms for the monoids, the groups, the rings. So, it's not enough to have just a bunch of symbols, but we just we need to have axioms that uh, the algebra that all models of algebra must follow. So, in so for the axioms of the monoids, we have models such as the natural numbers under multiplication, uh, the free monoid over sigma, which is the set of all strings of um, on the, over the alphabet sigma, and we form new uh, strings by string concatenation. Uh, groups, for the axioms for the groups, we have uh, models such as the dihedral group of order n, and one of my favorite, the relatively prime group of order n. Go number theory. And we also have rings. Uh, the two of the most common are the complex numbers under the standard multiplication and, and addition, and uh, real numbers under the multiplication and addition. So what we're going to do is, well, so we can talk about algebras using axioms and logic. But the, one of the questions we'd like to ask is, given axioms k and set of ground equations e, when a ground equation is just an equation with no variables. And by the way, this is not just no free variables. I mean, sentences are ground equations, but not all ground equations are sentences. No variables whatsoever. Um, anyways, given the axioms k and set of ground equations e, we want to see if it implies the ground equation s equal t for terms s and t. And in particular, we split this uh, word problem into three particular word problems. We have the uniform word problem for k, so give, decide, we want to decide given any e, so any set of ground equations e, and s equals t e, so these are given, uh, any of these whether that E proves it S equals T for all models M of K. The word problem for K and fixed, uh, for K and fixed E. So that's um, deciding given S equals T, whether E proves S equals T for all models M of K. And lastly, so for the free word problem for K, so decide, we want to decide, given any s equals t, whether we can uh, prove s equals t for all models m of k. So we can do these for any set of axioms k, but in particular today, we will focus on the word problem for rings. And there's a few reasons why we like to do this. One is that we can embed certain monoids and groups into a ring. So, um, and that's just by the definition of the rings. It's, if you think about it, a restriction of it, it will be, uh, I think, an abelian, um, it's an abelian group along with an abelian monoid, I believe. Well, that's if we have uh, a commutative ring. Uh, but, it's, but essentially, certain types of rings and groups are, if we restrict the ring 
axioms to, um, to, ha to have, for example, just a multiplication language or just the addition language, then essentially we have, we're talking about a certain type of group or a certain type of monoid. Uh, and these are illuminated through the following theorems that uh, are in Harrison. Uh, theorem 5.25, a universal formula in the multiplicative language of monoids holds in all abelian monoids, if and only if it holds in all, in all rings. So we're only restricting ourselves to the multiplicative language. Likewise, in theorem 5.27, the word problems uh, for abelian groups in rings in the commutative, common additive language are equivalent. And this is proved in Harrison page 400. Uh, by the way, just, just once again, we have to restrict ourselves to abelian groups because I'm, uh, in Harrison, I think it was in an earlier chapter, he proves that the, uh, uh, that the general word problem for groups, for groups, undecidable. But here we have, um, and I think the word problem was, uh, it was a, so yeah, so that was undecidable. So, Another reason why we like the, but if you want to learn about uh, other results, other than just ones with rings in other algebras, so they, in uh, Harrison, he already solved the free word problem for groups using um, kuf bendix completion. And this was uh, section 4.7. However, I am pretty sure that um, the general word problem on the side, it can't be solved. And I'll uh, attach that at the end of this presentation. Or I'll, I'll send it in email. So, so, also, we would like to focus on E finite. So when we write K union E proves S equals T, uh, then we can uh, put, move the, all the E's to the right and so that K proves for any X1 up to Xn, the finite conjunction, uh, conjunction of SI equals TI implies S equals T, where we take the very, where we uh, quantify over variables Xi and we use those, um, to replace the constants that appear in the ground equations but don't appear in K. Okay, so I talked about rings and monoids and groups. I never really defined a ring. So I go, I'm going to define the ring axioms. So the first few ring axioms belong to an abelian group. We have to have um, the addition be associative. Uh, the, I mean, the, the um, the addition be commutative, the commutation be associative. Uh, adding of um, zero is just gives you x. We have to have uh, uh, inverses. Uh, and we also have um, abelian monoids uh, properties, which is for the multiplication. So a commutative um, multiplication, associative multiplication, multiplication by one equals uh, just x. And we also combine those two, we'd like to have a distributivity law. And these, all these axioms are schemas. So, because we will need that later on, and we had to exploit the, um, so, we, and we're gonna exploit the fact that this is just uh, schemas. So, and also because we are in first order logic without equality, we're gonna need all the um, equality axioms 